Okay, so today's video is going to be on installing and running your own dedicated Arc server on Ubuntu 18.04. Um, I'm creating this video because I found a ton of articles on doing it with Ubuntu 6, but they kind of didn't follow the same steps that I wanted to do, and I ran into a few problems that I had to self-resolve by just figuring things out. And so I'm kind of hoping I can just throw this all together for anybody that wants to just do it easily without uh, the same troubleshooting after following a guide online. So what I also wanted to talk about initially was I got my diagram over here on the side that talks about like what, what we're doing. So we're going to install an Arc server on Ubuntu. And then what we need to do is there's a couple other steps. One, we have to open up firewall ports so that you can your outside friends can actually talk to that uh, that um, Arc server. So this, this is called either... In the, in the network world, is called NAT, which is Network Address Translation. But on your router device, it's likely referred to as port forwarding. And what we're going to do is we're just going to do a NAT statement that says um, we're going to map, say, like 27,015 on the outside to your Ubuntu server that's running Arc on the inside and, and 7777 on the outside to that, that Ubuntu server on the inside. Um, the other thing that happens is when you spin up your Arc server, it actually connects to the Steam and or Arc registry, I guess. I, I'm not 100% certain on how this works, but it does take a while for your Arc server to register itself so that people can actually see it in the Arc game list. I would say this could easily take up to 15 minutes, so you're going to get your whole Arc server running, and you're not going to see it when you try to join it, you or you internally on the same network or your friends outside. So just be patient in that space. Um, but let's go ahead and get started. What I've got is a uh, Ubuntu Linux box, it's 1804, it's 64-bit, and I've actually got 16 gigs of RAM on this because I've done Arc servers in the past, and, and 8 gigs was kind of like the absolute minimum, I think, that you need. Some people say in the minimum 6, but man, I, I think your Arc server would suffer if you tried to run it on 6. Mine was suffering on 8, so I'm running it on 16. I happen to have a sizable... Uh, it's actually a desktop. It's a it's a workstation desktop, so it's a Dell Precision. I think that's the line. It's an older older box, but it has 128 gigs of RAM on it, and it's running ESXi, free license. And so I've got lots of RAM to throw at this Arc server. Um, I hope you do too. You need at least eight, otherwise it's not going to work. So um, let's get started. So the first thing I always do because I'm lazy and I'm don't feel like typing my password a bunch of times. I'm going to switch to my root account so that every command I type is under root. Um, there's a couple things I wanted to do. Is first, let's make sure that we're up to date. I think I updated this already. Maybe I didn't. Hopefully I did. Oh, well, it's OK. It's a pretty re recent release, so I don't think it'll take too long to go through these. And then there's a couple more steps we need to do. We need to install some um, repositories. I guess Steam is actually a 32 or uses 32-bit stuff. So we're going to have to look. I got that in there twice. I guess I don't need that twice. I'm going to delete this. Um, we're going to install some of this next. And um, to be honest with you, I, I don't I don't know what multiverse is. I'm not a, a again. I'm not a Linux guy, so I don't know what that means. Um, we're also adding architecture i386, which would be 32-bit. And then we're updating the, the installer repository, like caching on your client, on your server, rather. And then we're going to go ahead and install this GCC32, I guess. That's the 32-bit version of GCC compiler. And then we're going to install Steam command through, through a repository instead of through a download um, gzip file. So, um, so that up update is done. So let's go ahead and add the multiverse already enabled okay so I didn't even have to do that so then I want to add architecture 32 bit and then we'll run an update and it's probably going to take a little bit of time I think it has to go through a few more of these yeah so the last time it ran this specific thing it was up here and you can see it was only like six and now we just went through 18 of them so now we're going to install this library yes I do and then I'm going to install steam command and this one I think actually prompts you while it's in the middle of the installer Agreeing to some license. I'm going to say I agree. Sorry, my nose is kind of running. Uh, there's some settings for performance that people recommend, so we're just going to start adding those right now. And one of those is setting max file settings. And I'm setting them to 100,000. Honestly, I'm not sure what the what the default is on that. I don't know any if it's anywhere near that, but that's what we're going to set it to. We're also going to set soft U limits for and hard U limits for for uh, excuse me file 
view limits for soft and hard files. I guess I should put this like in here so it looks a little better. I'm going to copy paste these. So basically it's just a wild card. 100,000 for each of those. And then I'm not 100% certain that you have to type the U limit in 100,000, but we're going to do it anyways. Can't imagine it's that big of a deal. So one of the things we're going to do too is I'm going to create a, a user account called Steam. Um, I'm assigning my a mine a password so I can log in as it. I would highly recommend you not use a cheesy password like that. It's a pretty weak password. So, But for this demonstration, we'll just do that. So it's user add create home. It's going to create a home folder for it. By default, I'll put that under slash home. And then I'm going to define a shell bin bash. I'm going to set the password and then username is Steam. So now if you do an ls home, you can see there's a Steam there. And then let's do it la so you can see the permissions. It's already assigned to Steam Steam user group. Um, so I'm going to switch now to the Steam user. And so now you can see the prompt has changed and so I'm logged in as Steam. I'm going to create a, a link here for the Steam command to be under. So my present directory is the home directory for Steam. And I'm going to create a link to the Steam command to the root of my um, home folder for Steam. So now you can see Steam command is here. So now I can reference Steam command directly from here. Um, the next step I'm going to do is it's actually going to install the Arc server components. This takes a decent amount of time, so I'm going to go ahead and run this. And um, I was thinking of letting it sit here and let you guys watch. I don't know because it's actually quite the time. Like this is a small piece of it. Once it starts downloading the large Arc, I think Arc is you know it's like one or ten gigs. I don't remember. We'll we'll look at the f the file size in a second. It'll actually show you. It's pretty sizable, so if your internet connection is pretty slow, this will actually take some time to go through this. So this is just updating the Steam client, I believe. Now that we've done that, we're going to connect in to probably what this, I would imagine this is like a Steam repository for installing the Steam games. So one of the things I did, though, let me explain this command a little bit. We're logging anonymously, so I'm not providing any credentials to Steam. I'm also forcing an installer. I want to make sure that the Arc server is installed under my home profile for Steam, and then it's under the Arc server folder. I believe this number here is the Steam app, like the Steam server app ID. I'm not, I, I would imagine, because otherwise, if I'm doing Steam command, where's the other reference that says, hey, this is what you're downloading? So this has to relate to the Steam, or excuse me, the Arc server instance. So that's, that's what that number means. Oh, so here's the download. This is what I was talking about. So this is pretty sizable. So if you were to look at that, and let's put some commas in there, you can see that it is 11.5 gigs. So it's actually going to take some time. You can see I've got here progress is 2%, 2.5%. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the video. If I can find the pause button. It's right there. And then we'll come back when that's closer to like 95 Okay, so it's finally done. That took so long. I think I literally ate lunch, breakfast, and dinner the following day. And, uh, well, I'm just kidding. It didn't really take that long. But I, I bet it took uh, an hour. Anyhow, so the next thing we want to do is um, I want to make this into a service. So that anytime I restart this host, that I don't have to um, start the Arc service up itself. So, um, and the reason for that is because uh, it's just better. So I exited out of Steam. So I'm no longer logged in as Steam anymore. Now I'm logged back in as root. I'm going to, oops, I forgot I blocked and copied that. I'm going to go ahead and edit a new file called arc.service in the etc. systemd system folder. And I'm not going to type it all. We're just going to copy paste this into here. And that should have been good to go. I think I got it all right, unit. Yep. Arc survival. Okay, so basically a couple things. Um, you want to make sure that you're logging in. The, the service needs to run as user Steam, group Steam. Um, you want a working folder. This solves some problems with some of the clients. I've set a no, a limit, a no file limit to 100,000. This is the same kind of thing that we did previously in the uh, limits.conf, but you're also defining it for the service itself. Um, this is one thing you want to change here is the session name. This is the name that shows up in the Arc server search. So change that to something that matches your server. That's just the one that I'm using. And obviously, if you installed it in a different location than I did, you need to make sure that all of these folders reflect that. So I, I installed an Arc server 
which means that the exec starts can be an arc server and, and so forth. So just make sure you get all that correct. I'm going to save that file. And now that we have that, what we're going to do is restart the, the uh, system control daemon agent so that it ingests this new arc serve and arc service. And now if I do a system status, you can see that it is um, not loaded, right? And so I'm going to go ahead and start that. And it should take a little bit of time to start it up. Actually, I'm not going to start it yet because there's one thing I want to do. We're going to, as a last step here, I'm going to configure the uh, game user settings at any new directory. Uh, you know why? It's because I haven't started the game. So that's why. So you got to start, you got to start it first. So let's go back. I retract that. I'm going to start it. And um, basically then once it starts once, it should create that file, the settings file. Um, I read a bunch of things online that talked about this, this particular API fail. And some people are saying it's related to your U limits. Other people are saying it's related to like a firewall. Um, I think in this case, I'm running this on Linux. There literally is no Steam client. So I don't know. It doesn't, it didn't affect me. So I successfully got this running, still had this error, and I was able to connect to my own Arc server. So if you can't connect your own Arc server after waiting 15 minutes for it to show up in the registry, then maybe, maybe it would be a good idea to uh, go down some of those paths that people talk about in Google. But I think for the most part, this is not an issue as long as you got the U limit and your firewall settings are good. So now that I got that running, though, I'm going to stop Arc service. And let's just make sure that it's not running. Stopped. Perfect. Now let's go edit this game settings. And so now you can see it's here. So it created this on the first run. So what I want to do, though, is I don't want just anybody showing up on my server. So I am going to set a password. Server admin password. So this is like in case you want to cheat. Um, I'm not going to leave them that, so don't think you're going to join my game based off of that. <laughs> okay, so now that I got those set, I'm literally going to start it. Start arc. And give it a second. And now let's see the status. And you can see that it is currently running. Perfect. Okay, so keep in mind your next steps are the NAT port forwarding rules that you need to do. Um, I got a couple of them listed here. These are the these are the numbers that I've seen online. To be honest with you, the only ones that I forwarded today, and it works for me. I mean, again, it's kind of clunky. I, I, it's hard to tell, right? Because it takes forever for the thing to show up in Arc, so it makes you wonder, like, did I not do it right? But these are literally the only two that I port forwarded for my instance, and I was able to connect to it from my computers in my house. Um, to be honest with you, I haven't tested it with a friend outside. I would assume that it's okay, but just based off of the fact that it shows up in the, the Arc server list. But um, that's basically it. Now you have a running Arc server running as a service on Ubuntu. And you can see that I'm consuming almost 8 gigs of RAM, virtual RAM here, um, which is quite a bit, right? It's consuming a lot. So let's load up Arc. I already had it running. I'm going to try to see if I can do a join and see if it shows up. So I've got it. So a couple things when you search for it, you first need to say server session is unofficial. You also need to say show password protected by default. It will not. So check both of those. And then up at the top, type in the name of your instance that you defined on the start script. So if you forgot what that looks like, that was in the service itself. So that's VI, et cetera, system D, system arc dot service, literally right here, session name reflects what you should see here. Now, keep in mind, I, uh, I literally just started this, right? So I have a feeling it's not going to show in this list for like 15 minutes. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video again and just wait till it shows back up. I'll see you again in a second. Okay, so finally got it um, connected. And you can see right here that it's allowed 70 players. This is literally my server. And if I were to join this, it would literally log in and join the uh, server that we just stood up. So again, I've only port mapped or port forwarded rather nat natted these two ports. So I don't think you need to do more than that unless you're adding other things like Archon or something. But um, I think that's it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was actually kind of fun to watch. I know I'll probably use it myself in the near future because uh, if I s turn up another Arc server, I'm definitely going to be following these instructions because uh, the other ones don't seem to work for 1804. So um, thanks for watching.